And now it is time for our uh, next uh, talk with Dr. Tendai, I think is ready. Yeah, we, we will have um, a talk about AI and chatbots in the public sector. Are we really designing for the public? Uh, our speaker is Dr. Tendai Makassi. He is a doctor in School of Information Systems, the Faculty of Science, Queensland University of Technology. Welcome, Dr. Tendai, and please take the floor. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for welcoming me. Um, just to confirm, can everybody hear me? Um, all right, so I assume everybody can hear me. Um, yeah, so firstly, I would like to thank the organizers of this conference for giving me this opportunity to present uh, the work that I've been doing over the couple of years. I would also want to thank uh, all of you in the audience for uh, devoting your time to listen to my presentation today. Um, so when I received the invitation to uh, prepare a speech for this conference, I thought to myself, what best can I talk about? Um, uh, so I thought I would just consolidate uh, some of the work that I've been doing over the past three or four years looking at how AI and chatbots are being designed and how, how much impact they're having in the public sector. So my talk for today is just uh, going to, uh, bring to bring together pieces from uh, different pieces of work that we've worked on over the past years and I've titled it under the title of AI and chatbots in the public sector. I was really designing for the public. <clears throat> um, I also want to express that um, I really appreciate this opportunity because uh, oftentimes uh, when I get to present my work is to a different audience and now I'm happy that uh, there's a significant number of software designers who are going to be in the audience as well, who I'll share my findings with today. When I look at AI technology in the public sector, um, so what AI does is it's mainly implemented to support delivery of services, and this is achieved by automating data processing. Um, so we all know that uh, AI brings in additional capabilities such as uh, predictive analytics to service delivery, which can offer significant benefits uh, to different aspects of public service delivery. So across the world, we've seen uh, various public agencies adopting AI technologies in different forms, uh, some in chatbots, which is going to be the predominant topic of my uh, talk today. We also see recommender systems which are being used in various uh, healthcare institutions, especially, and uh, some other uh, countries are also trying to uh, initiate uh, AI technologies uh, in the um, context of intelligent assist assistance. So recently, I mean, also driven by uh, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen a rise of uh, AI technologies being implemented by different public agencies and especially the chatbots, mainly because of the benefits that they present. But interestingly though, uh, what we've noticed over the years and even up until today is that AI technologies, when they're implemented specifically in the public sector, they often tend to attract mixed reactions from different public stakeholders. So these uh, extracts that I've shown here, I think they give a good picture of how um, AI technologies are being received differently from different angles. We see that they provide, um, they offer significant opportunities to improving our cities, the way we live and service delivery. But at the same time, we also see um, other professionals and experts questioning the um, usefulness of uh, investing in AI technologies specifically within a public service context. Um, we also have a significant number of um, the users themselves which we are targeting to be the beneficiaries of these systems, questioning why we need to be investing in these um, sort of technologies. <clears throat> yep. So this took me to the next slide. Um, so ideally, I would have presented this towards the end as it is part of my findings, but I thought I would introduce it at the beginning of my talk here so that I could highlight the um, extent of the problem that we're currently facing when it comes to adverse um, in the public services. So what I did here is uh, in one of the uh, research works that we did, uh, we conducted interviews with uh, users of chatbots 
it's particularly those who had interacted with the chatbot within a specific public service context. And we wanted to understand uh, the reasons why they would use a chatbot in the future or the reasons why they would not use a chatbot in the future based on whatever previous experience they had. So these are just extracts of some of the comments that we drew from the users of chatbots. So as we can see on the left side, uh, it kind of uh, highlights some of the benefits that chatbot offer in public services. Uh, for example, there is no waiting to receive service assistance. This is what we know why public agencies are constantly investing more and more in these type of technologies. Um, the users also mentioned there is no need to travel in person to the offices. Um, chatbots were also in order to provide direct links to the service, which is quite handy for users, especially when they need, uh, when they have to be de redirected to specific uh, services. <clears throat> Um, importantly, there was also a significant number of users who highlighted that they can only trust using a chatbot when the request they have is quite straightforward and simple. But on the other hand, I think the majority of the people that I interviewed in the study, they noted that um, they would not want to reuse a chatbot because of the um, not so good experience that they had with uh, their interaction with chatbots. So here are some of the comments that I drew. The first one, it talks about the chatbot just give uh, basic responses, whereas the users, particularly in public service context, they might be looking for detailed um, type of assistance. I think we can all relate that um, when uh, each of us goes to a public office to seek to seek any type of service, it's because of some pain that we're experiencing in our lives at some point, and that. Um, Usually those problems, they do not require simple or generic responses. They need um, whoever is serving us, the public agents, to listen with care and also consider a lot of factors before they can hand out a recommendation. So almost aligning with that is the second comment which talks about uh, just saying, was I not smart enough to guide me through the all ne necessary uh, options that are available? I mean, we all know that AI, it has capabilities to be able to do that, but it's currently falling short of guiding the users in terms of uh, providing all the necessary options that they require. Uh, another important factor as well is the insensitivity to um, other, other information indicators such as the stress levels or the emotions that might be uh, attached when a person comes and presents their service request. I found this last point quite uh, interesting because it says um, one of the users mentioned that the grammar might not be good, so the chatbot would not understand. And I was wondering, I think it's one of the things that chatbots do well because um, they are very good at picking the one word or just a few words from a sentence and then trying to understand to make um, sense out of what the user is trying to get. But then this user, when I probe them further, they explained that um, the problem with me might be that I don't even know how to spell the word. So if I spell, I misspell a word, then the chatbot might completely misinterpret what I'm trying to say and then direct me to something that's completely irrelevant. That was quite uh, significant for me, hence I noted it here. So when we look at all these factors, um, so I moved in and tried to understand what the problem could be really when it comes to the implementation of AI technologies and chatbots in public service. So I took a step backwards and tried to understand the purpose of the public sector. What is it that the public sector is designed for? So uh, we know that the public sector is designed to facilitate a creation of public value, and this is achieved through the delivery of public services. But uh, when you look at AI technologies, um, from a service management perspective, they are nothing new to any other uh, technologies that we've introduced to sort of uh, improve the level of service delivery or the experience of service delivery as well. All we know about AI technologies that they are enablers of the service uh, delivery experience, hence they should make the whole experience better. So by joining these two um, components together, we see that introducing AI technology in the public sector should focus on facilitating um, the public value through um, improved public service delivery. But however, what was more important, what was more striking in as we we're doing this study is that we saw that most of the public agencies, when they adopt AI initiatives, including chatbots, they are mainly focusing on a limited number of performance indicators such as efficiency. So by this, they'll be looking at uh, how quickly we manage to serve the people, um, 
effectiveness is another key performance indicator for the public agencies that they'll be looking to have, um, improve on. So some of the um, elements that they look at in relation to effectiveness is how many people have you managed to save through the chatbot? And the third one is return on investment, is that are we able to save more people without employing more public employees? These are the key uh, drivers to public agencies adopting um, AI technology such as chatbots in service delivery. But what we know now, if we take a step backwards as well in understanding the public sector, is that public value is way broader than just these three dimensions of effect, efficiency, effectiveness, and return on investment. Um, <clears throat> So this brought me to, the, to ask the question then now, um, how can chatbots contribute to public value holistically? So from there, um, the first thing we uh, realized with my research team was that um, in order for us to adopt a holistic approach to ensure that chatbots create public value, we needed to make sure that all the chatbot attributes are, are created with a purpose that is, they have to be um, specific attributes that are created with the goal of um, facilitating specific uh, public service value dimensions. Um, so when it comes to public value, now this is a whole experience that will involve both um, the initiative that is from the process of designing it, developing the chatbot as well as implementation. So as such, we've tried to uh, decouple this and try to um, understand the different factors that would feed into uh, inform the type of chatbot attributes that we need to consider if we are looking at chatbots that will contribute towards uh, public value creation. So the first and foremost was uh, we needed to make sure that um, the public agencies themselves know how to manage chatbots in order for them to create uh, public value. So that's one of the key elements, looking at the public agencies themselves. The second thing is, um, there was also a need for us to conceptualize this public value within the context of um, service delivery that is facilitated through a chatbot. <laughs> so often we know that the concept has been described mainly for face-to-face -face service interactions, but there's not really been um, a good conceptualization of the notion when it comes to, um, for example, when AI agents are replacing the role that uh, human agents used to play traditionally. The other key factor that we saw could contribute there as well, it relates to um, the type of chatbots. As much as we use chatbots as an umbrella term, they all have different properties and different capabilities, which we all need to take into consideration in relation to the type of service that the chatbot is going to um, be facilitating. So these three form the building blocks into what would eventually um, inform uh, the chatbot attributes, uh, designing chatbot attributes that contribute to the creation of public value. No, um, looking at the first building block, which was how public agencies can manage AI technologies for public value. <clears throat> um, as I have highlighted earlier, that uh, creating public value is only achieved through public service delivery. So our first step when we look uh, when we're looking into this was uh, we, re we reviewed different types of AI that are being used in different public service contexts. So the first thing that we realize is that uh, AI technologies are often implemented in very diverse types of services. And as such, we needed to have a way of at least classifying uh, these different types of public services in a way that we might be able to understand um, the differences uh, that contribute to which type of AI technologies are implemented in which uh, conditions. <clears throat> So we drew down to these um, two dimensions, which is the level of volition. Is the public service voluntary or is it a mandatory one? And then the level of collectiveness. Is it a public service that is consumed at an individual level or is it one that is consumed by uh, the public collectively at, at a goal? So the next thing we did then was looking at this very broad and abstract concept of public value. And to do that, we had to pick one of the most uh, prominent frameworks that describes creating public value and then we tailor it with um, our study. The other component which was also looking at the service management frameworks, there we had to review the different types of frameworks that exist from a service management perspective. And then we ended up choosing the ITU service management framework, 
which is one that provides a more practical approach to managing services. <laughs> so using these three components, we uh, combined them together and then we analyzed the information and came up with uh, 12 guiding principles that would enable public agencies to manage um, um, AI technologies to create public value. Um, so what we also did is we classified these uh, type of these guiding principles according to the type in which the public space would fall into, as you can see in the bottom right corner. So just talk about what each guiding principle would look like. So here I've given an example of uh, one of the guiding principles that we came up with, which is guiding principle four. So which emphasizes that um, developing AI technologies uh, is a process that requires uh, making sure that you have a multidisciplinary team with uh, equal representation of experts from different fields. We also went a step further for each of these uh, guiding principles that we came up with and um, defined uh, three detailed recommendations that would be applicable to the three different stages of the design, the development and implementation phases of the chatbot. So for example, looking at the same example of um, the guiding principle number four, at the design phase, what would a public agency need to consider? They need to make sure that uh, they establish a team with equal technical, legal and ethical expertise uh, of AI design to support the holistic approach. So similarly, during the development, these uh, key individuals would need to be engaged and the implementation and post the implementation of the chatbot as well, you'd still need to ensure that um, the performance of the chatbot in itself is constantly reviewed by a team of multidisciplinary members that are consistently looking at uh, the different aspects from different angles. So for those who might want um, more details in terms of uh, the other guiding principles, I've provided the link to one of the publications that we, we, we wrote on this topic, which is there. Um, so I'll move now to the second uh, block of our investigation, where we're now looking at how do we conceptualize this uh, notion of public value within an AI context. <clears throat> um, so it was at this stage that we took a more focused um, approach by looking at uh, chatbots specifically. Um, so what we saw is that, um, first of all, we tried to understand the role that chatbots play during service delivery. And uh, we can all agree that um, this is a role that is similar to what was being done by public agents traditionally. And uh, what governed the actions of public agents, as we all know, is uh, a set of um, dimensions which are often referred to as the public service value dimensions. So these are the dimensions that define the social, professional, ethical, and uh, reasonable or legitimate conduct that public employees are expected to exhibit when they are providing service to the public employees. So the question now is, how do we make sure that uh, chatbots can also exhibit the same type of uh, dimensions when they are serving the public? Because it's still the same public um, context that they're operating in. So what we did is uh, we adopted this notion of public service value, which is more specific to defining how uh, public agents um, contribute towards creation of public value. Uh, and then um, we conceptualize these dimensions so that they could be more specific and easily understandable, or we can interpret them within a context of childhood mediated public service value dimensions. Uh, all in all, we came up with 14 public service value dimensions with all the definitions that are provided. And specifically, these were all described within the context of childhoods. What does professionalism mean in the context of a chatbot? So we needed to explain all those important attributes that uh, need to be considered by chatbots. So the next thing we did now is uh, we went on and started analyzing uh, chatbots being used in different public service contexts in order to understand what role they are actually playing. Um, and then we saw that the chatbots are implemented at three different service levels. So the first one is just uh, the simply um, information provisioning. We should relate more to uh, providing responses that can be more like uh, the frequently asked question responses. Um, there are other type of uh, chatbots as well that provide some sort of targeted assistance. These ones, they um, 
sort of have a bit of personalization in the service experience they provide. Most of them, they can collect the user's information, but however, they do not provide any, um, any service response or service um, outcome. What they do is they simply collect the information, probably relay the information to the next, uh, uh, to a human agent or the next service that's going to use that information. And the highest level of um, uh, service delivery where we saw chatbots being integrated was the service negotiation level, where the chatbot was completely entrusted to handle the interaction from the beginning up until uh, it gets to a resolution with uh, a user. So I have to highlight here that there were very limited examples of uh, chatbots that were being implemented at this level. And most of the examples that we saw, they faced backlash quickly, either from the public or from other experts, that they ended up just rolling, um, being reduced in scope to either targeted or just being information provisioning types of um, chatbots. So with these two um, outputs um, from this building block, which is the 14 public service value dimensions and the levels of uh, three levels of chatbot mediated public service delivery, um, we came up with um, a framework which we derived from analyzing the different uh, chatbot initiatives in the public sector. So what we did is we looked at all examples of uh, chatbot initiatives that have been successful and the ones that had failed, and we analyzed them against each of the public service, 14 public service value dimensions that we had um, identified. And um, what we found out was that um, all of the 14 public service value dimensions were important, but however, the level of importance and the uh, level, the difficulty of upholding them, it differs in relation to the type of service that is being, uh, that the chatbot is being designed for. So for example, at the highest level, which is the service negotiation, we see that it becomes so complicated for the collaborative intelligence public service value to be implemented. But however, you know, it's also at that level where it becomes increasingly important to make sure that collaborative intelligence is there. So uh, more details about this framework, which I think would be very valuable for designers or software designers or chatbot designers to consider, it can be found um, in another publication that we made and I've provided the link there as well. Um, so the other building block that we that I spoke about earlier, which is uh, trying to understand the different types of chatbots that are used in public service uh, delivery. So we know that uh, chatbots have different properties and different uh, capabilities, and uh, it is also very much important that we design uh, chatbots specifically that suit the specific uh, type of service. So here again, we went and explored chatbots in different. Uh, being used in different service contexts. And the aim now was to be able for us to classify what are the technical properties of the chatbots in different contexts? What are the functional capabilities that each of these chatbots uh, present? Um, from this analysis, we managed to um, identify that there are three types of uh, chatbot mediated uh, public service complexity levels, which is the service triaging that um, relates uh, in the previous slide would relate more to information provisioning. So that's simply when a chatbot will be providing the yes or no, the simple responses. The second uh, level of service complexity refers more to the service information gathering and analysis, where the chatbot is more of uh, collecting uh, more personal information about the user, but again, does not provide any um, definite um, responses to the user it would rather um, convey that information to an expert so that they can verify before the information goes back um, to be um, to inform the user. And then the highest level of complexity, again, was the service negotiation where the chatbot tra is entrusted to conduct all the negotiation process and uh, provide a solution, a possible solution to the user. So we also uh, went on to identify two categories of chatbots, which we named as advanced chatbots and basic chatbots. So the difference here is uh, the basic chatbots are merely those ones that uh, would use a basic um, tree approach, if I can say a generative approach where there is no AI that is used. It's more um, the one zero approach. If this is true, then that's the response. If not, then that's not the response. 
whereas the advanced chatbots are the ones that employ um, advanced AI technologies uh, such as uh, um, neuro neural networks and uh, to process the information. And they also combine uh, information from the collection of databases that may be interconnected in the background. <clears throat> So importantly, when, we, when we're looking at this was, uh, we wanted to make sure that um, when chatbots are being designed for a specific public service context, uh, we need to make sure that uh, the minimum technical, capabil technical properties and functional capabilities that are necessary for that type of service, they are always designed into the chatbot itself. So, um, here is how uh, the chatbot, the typology of chatbots in public service delivery that we came up with um, looked like. So overall, we had uh, we identified three different types of basic chatbots, which are labeled as B1, B2, B3, and then we also identified uh, two um, advanced types of chatbots, um, which are A, which are A1 and A2, and then all the other specific details are provided uh, in this typology table. Um, so I'd also invite all software developers, chatbot designers that are within the audience to check this um, this typology and see how it can inform them when they're designing, uh, especially when they're designing software or probably other AI technologies that are not necessarily uh, chatbots, but they would still be used in the public sector. So that's the link to the paper as well that um, provides uh, the full details of uh, all these typologies for those who might want um, to know more about it. Um, so finally, so if you remember what I presented in the second slide, which was the comments from the users. Um, after we had compiled all those, we then, we then set out to try to understand the public value itself from the perspective of uh, the chatbot users and what uh, chatbot designers understand when they're designing um, chatbots in the public sector. Um, so with the users, we took a more open-ended approach where we were conducting um, laddering interviews uh, with uh, chatbot users who previously used uh, chatbot within a public service context. So what laddering allows us to do is um, it enables um, understanding from the user's responses, the root values of why they have certain feelings um, towards a certain technology. So in this instance, the first question we pose our users was, would you use a chatbot again for any type of uh, public service or not? So um, if the answer is yes, then we'd ask, uh, what is it that drives you to use a chatbot again? What is it that you uh, enjoyed? Uh, so by asking that question, the users would more likely just uh, present the affordances that chatbot present them that uh, drive them to continue wanting to use chatbots. So for the for the opposite, like if the users say, no, I would not use a chatbot again, would also go and try to understand why they wouldn't use a chatbot. And then that way would understand the type of affordances that the chatbots is not providing that makes people want to look away, that makes people want to look to other channels of service delivery. So we'll connect the dots from the affordances and then we see what are the consequences of having that affordance or not having it. And then ultimately we'll link it to the type of value that uh, is important for each uh, of the users. So interestingly, we saw that um, when we're interviewing the users, they highlighted um, these five public value dimensions is the ones that are most critical to them. These are the ones that lead them to use or not to lead to use a chatbot. So that is efficiency, effectiveness, trust, legitimacy, and sustainability. Um, in parallel with that, we also conducted semi-structured interviews with chatbot designers. Um, so for these ones, uh, we were using a, the uh, chatbot mediated public service value framework, which I've shown you earlier. And we try to understand from them which of those public service value dimensions they would consider when they're designing chatbots in a public service context. Um, and we also try to understand how they would consider them, how would they design those um, chatbots to make sure that they uphold those uh, specific uh, service value dimensions. So it was interesting to note that um, almost all the designers, they agreed that um, the list of public service value dimensions that's in the framework were all important, however, to different degrees. 
So the ones that I've shown here on the left, which is efficiency, effectiveness, trust, user orientation, professionalism, and adaptability. These were highlighted by all the uh, designers that we interviewed as critically important towards uh, a good functioning chatbot. Um, I've highlighted effectiveness in red here because there was something important that we noted. As much as uh, effectiveness was both appearing for chatbot users and chatbot designers, their interpretation of effectiveness was different. For the chatbot users, effectiveness meant, did I achieve what I set out to achieve when I was going to this chatbot? So that's more of a service, service need, service outcome here. So oftentimes effectiveness was not satisfied for the chatbot user. Whereas when we came to the chatbot designers, their definition of effectiveness was one that was driven largely by what the public agencies were telling them, that we want to be able to handle an increased volume of uh, service inquiries. So to the chatbot designers, they'll probably say our chatbot is being effective because it keeps on receiving more and more inquiries from people. But what they're not tracking is, are these people when they leave happy with the service that they've received or are they not happy? So there was a bit of a mismatch there because users were noting it as chatbots are not effective, whereas chatbot designers were confident that the chatbots we're designing have been effective. We can judge that by the numbers of people who are using them. <clears throat> So the other dimensions that are here, um, so the chatbot designers all noted them. So that is accountability, privacy, legitimacy, acceptability, social license, and fairness. These were noted as being not necessarily important for the functioning of the chatbot, but however, they are more regulatory. So which means they also need to be considered every time um, chatbot designers are designing chatbots and for specifically the public service context. Um, it's also interesting to note that um, chatbot designers, they did not quite have a solution of how to implement three of the public service value dimensions, which I have not listed here. So those were openness, sustainability, and collaborative intelligence. Even though they all agreed that these are important value dimensions, they could not provide any sort of interventions that they could um, integrate into chatbots for them to be able to uphold those values. And uh, I guess that calls for more investigation um, for all the researchers and other software engineers that are in the audience today. <coughs> so um, the findings from this, they are well summarized in another publication that I've shown here. I've given a link to it for those who want to know more about the differences and in more detail. Um, so from a research perspective, I do understand there might be um, other people in, uh, in the audience that are also coming from a research, um, research field as well. So what uh, the approach that we've taken through this uh, research work is one that is um, influenced by uh, the value sensitive design approach. So what this does is we are trying to make sure that we design systems that are grounded in uh, theoretical principles, and then they also make use of the evidence that we get uh, from practice. So as you can see here, um, the value sensitive um, design approach, it integrates the conceptual investigations, which is where we started by uh, investigating the public value concept, and the empirical investigations, trying to understand what are the views of the people that use the technology, and then the technical investigation, which is where we get to what are the specific uh, technical attributes that we need to consider for designing chatbots in this space. So for a more detailed um, interpretation of this value sensitive design, which is a more step-by-step, -step, this is how we followed the approach. So first we reviewed AI technologies in public services, and then we also reviewed the public value um, uh, notion. And then from there, we became focused on chatbots and we also went on and, uh, looked at public value from a public service value perspective. <clears throat> Moving into the empirical uh, components of it, we started exploring chatbots in practice. And then also part of the empirical and technical was looking at chatbots and trying to understand the affordances and how they relate to the values. And then also getting the input from the chatbot designers in terms of um, what sort of um, <clears throat> technical properties, uh, chatbot, chatbot attributes they would consider when designing chatbots uh, for use in the public sector. Um, so overall, I would say that um, it is 
quite important to consider these public service value dimensions when we are designing chatbots that are to be used within a public uh, public service context. Um, I'm not sure if we have any software or chatbot developers in the in the audience who have had an experience developing chatbots in such a context, but I would um, really encourage them to have a look at uh, some of the outputs that we've pro uh, produced here and uh, see how that can be helpful to them. Um, thank you very much. I tried to summarize everything in 15 minutes and I'm happy to take any questions if there are any. Thank you very much, Dr. Tandai, for uh, this uh, summary and highlights uh, about one of uh, the main uh, and the most, most popular AI-based uh, applications focusing on the public se sector, which can benefit a lot uh, from this technology. And now the floor is open for receiving any questions for Dr. Tandai. Are there any yeah. questions here from Egypt venue? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Tandai, people also may send the questions on the online uh, virtual platform of the conference. So please, uh, please follow up um, and uh, we appreciate your response for any questions on your session. Thank you very much. Right. We, we have uh, an, a question from an online uh, attendee. Uh, Please check yep. and uh, let us share uh, your uh, response. Yep. Um, yes, I, I agree to the comment that's been made here. Um, so that, that was actually one of the things, uh, one of the issues that we discovered through the interviews we were doing with the chatbot designers that most of them, they were trying to translate um, the benefits that chatbots present to uh, the private sector, which, are, which is not really um, beneficial when we're looking at it from the public service context, because um, there's huge differences of um, the type of people uh, that go to seek service from a uh, private company that's making to do business for a profit, whereas somebody would go to a public uh, organization because there is probably a pain or a need of um, assistance in their life in their lives. So, um, which is why I think it's always important to make sure that we go back to the drawing board and try to understand what is public, uh, what is a public service trying to achieve. It's not just about the effectiveness. It's not just about have I provided a quick response to them, but it's more about if I understood, if I helped this person in their time of need. Um, a good example would be looking at how chatbots have been, uh, have been used during this COVID pandemic. Um, sometimes when um, somebody presents with symptoms that look like uh, COVID and then you go to a chatbot, you're probably looking for, what can I say? Um, the assistance that we get when you go to a hospital is different from just uh, somebody telling you you had COVID, you don't have COVID. You just need um, some follow-up information, some follow-up instructions in terms of um, how can I help myself rather than just being direct to, okay, we've told you this, we've told you that. So I think yeah, it probably comes down to having a different design perspective when looking at designing, probably not just technology, chatbots or AI technologies, but any type of technology that is going to be used within a public service context. Well, thank you very much for that remark. Yes, I agree to that as well, yep. Uh, we have another uh, question, Dr. Uh, Tandai. Uh, we appreciate you, you, you answered this question too. Did you change the camera model? I'm not sure I quite understand this one. In it, comparison it, is about, to uh, it is about changing the machine learning model uh, uh, in comparison to using the previous designs for chatbot. 
uh, he, uh, he is asking about what sort of uh, comparisons between different models did you find and what technical contributions did you make apart from previous works in the domain of chatbots? Okay, okay. Thank you so much for that uh, question. So um, the research that I did, I didn't take it from a technical perspective, but I took it more from a service perspective that is trying to understand how um, chatbots are leveraged in the context of service delivery. So there might be um, models, ML models, which we didn't look into because that was not in the scope of our investigation. Our investigation was looking at how are these designs, how are those being leveraged uh, towards the creation of public value. So that could, there could be, um, I think, an opportunity to um, enhance the work here when you look at some of those models and make our findings more technical. So thank you very much for that remark as well. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Tandai.